right, it's currently the afternoon for me, so good afternoon. Today we will be conducting a review video over uh, engine pre-flight inspections and uh, the engine run-up. So, uh, in all, all aircrafts have a certain uh, procedure to be followed. Uh, this ensures safety uh, in addition to uh, the best possible performance for the aircraft. Operators should seek the uh, POH, the Pilot's Operating Handbook, for procedures uh, for each designated aircraft, and this basically this basically lists an uh, in-depth uh, process or procedures for various operating conditions. So, anytime you have any issues with the aircraft, you want to seek the POH. Uh, if you're maintenance personnel, you can seek the uh, also include the, the maintenance manual but uh, for today we will be going over we will use the single card at Latrano we have a single card uh, that basically uh, gives you a small snippet of each procedure to be done uh, most of the stuff is supposed to be done by memory and then uh, we also do a flow then verify so basically you flow uh, you know make it to a point where there's a line and at that line that's when you can go back and verify each of those items have been completed and then proceed on with the rest of the list so um, for my video though I will just cover the outside portion of the engine uh, the engine start portion and the engine right up I do have a video for the outside portion and for the engine run up uh, but regarding the engine start, I will just uh, verbally go over uh, certain safety issues or uh, precautions and uh, primarily uh, the procedures for that to be completed. All right, moving along to the engine. These are push-in screws, so I don't have to worry about that. First thing I want to look at is the air filter. This portion I stated air filter, I meant oil filter. I want to look at the oil filter and make sure that there isn't any uh, type of spill. That would, that would probably be one of the first indicators if there's some type of oil uh, leak or some type of lubricant in the aircraft which could uh, disrupt operations. And uh, the oil quantity is going for this engine specifically is going to be 4.5 to 6 quarts. Uh, that would reflect if there's any inside leaks or anything going on. So far from a visual approach, this engine looks clean and good. There are no leaks. The wires are not frayed or cut. They are secure. This battery is secure. Um, this engine uh, requires um, six to five quarts. And if we were at 4.5 at, at that point, that's when we would add one quart. I'm gonna go ahead and visually check this. What I like to do is clean off the stick completely so I can get an accurate reading. Normally I would do it with a napkin. I don't have that today, so I'm gonna use a glove. All right. Oil reflects five. That is sufficient. We are good to go for flight. And you don't want to turn this too tight. Um, we actually had a couple instances with this. Uh, basically, it just requires a quarter turn after uh, the point of its uh, where you feel like it's getting tight. And the reason that is is that in flight. Uh, oil is going to get hot. This whole engine compartment is going to get hot. And if you turn this too tight, by the time you land, the next person won't be able to, um, or possibly not be able to, to, to pull this off due to the heating. The metal expands and then it contracts. So, all right, closing up the engine compartment. Let me verify this. Make sure this is closed properly. Quarter turn. We got that. And these aren't like screws. You don't need to just keep turning. It, it doesn't work like that. You just basically push this mechanism, this mechanism in and turn it. At that point, quarter turn, turn it, and we are good. Moving on to the exhaust. We're going to verify the exhaust. Exhaust is good. There's no dents or dings on this propeller uh, side. 
Uh, I don't see anything that could restrict airflow within the engine. There is no bird's nest, no bees. Here on this alternate belt, I'm gonna do a quarter turn. Quarter turn, it is sufficient. Moving on to this hub, secure. This landing light is clear. This air compartment is clean. There's nothing to restrict airflow. Uh, so we are good to go for flight on that portion. Move along to this propeller. I don't feel any dents or dings on this side. And on this engine side, uh, there is nothing to restrict airflow. Um, I don't see anything out of order. Uh, there's no leaks or anything under the aircraft. And this portion, uh, this consists of the uh, pre-flight portion on ground. And uh, moving on, I will do the engine run up and reflect that portion. I will be completing this scorecard off of memory and it should be included uh, on this uh, presentation somewhere. Uh, so uh, this is the portion I spoke of, of basically a flow and a read and do, uh, flow and then verify and check uh, visually. Uh, so starting off, uh, ensure you, you uh, yell clear. Uh, you want to clear the area, make sure no one's around. Um, alarm people that, hey, you know, engine's about to start, you know, you may get hit by some prop blast or, or so on or some type of debris if you're not in the area or even worse, you know, we don't want anyone uh, in front of the aircraft. So we, we yell clear. Uh, next at that point, we verify, we check, uh, we turn on our master switch. Um, depending on the aircraft you're in, some aircraft you have to have on the navigation and strobes for uh, certain calibrations in the aircraft. So uh, we yell clear. For me and this aircraft, Jack 93, we just turn on just the strobes. Um, at that next point, you want to turn on your left magneto, right magneto, and uh, ensure that you yell clear prop at this time. <laughs> Verify, make sure no one's in the area. Uh, we yell clear prop, we got that out the way. And uh, moving along, uh, we're going to start the engine. Uh, depending on if the, if the aircraft's been sitting for a while, uh, the engine hot or cold there is uh, different there is different priming uh, for it uh, you want to make sure you don't over prime but uh, for a hot engine uh, essentially it needs no prime um, cold engine there's a whole different process for that and uh, the POH basically states that it's going to be two to six uh, pumps of the prime I would start off with two um, and then uh, you want to uh, engage the starter at that point um, engage the starter, um, let the prop turn for about five props, and then you want to uh, ease in with the throttle. Um, and now, let's say you possibly flooded uh, the, the aircraft, and uh, what you want to look out for in this instance would be possible engine fire that could happen. Um, you want to let, uh, you want to ensure that that fuel shut off valve. Um, is off and uh, let, let's say that there is a fire uh, so ensure that it's off and you want the engine basically to to consume that fire so you still start the prop um, finishing up with our checks uh, we started the engine um, at this point uh, I want to check and make sure the engine gauges are in the green uh, first thing is the uh, engine oil if the engine oil isn't in the green within 30 seconds um, at that point, you want to shut off the aircraft. If something's wrong, uh, could be uh, low pressure, high pressure, or, or no oils. Something isn't right, so shut the aircraft off, uh, depending on uh, what the policy states. Uh, so we check that, the ammeter's charging. Uh, ensure that the primer is locked. Do a couple of turns or so on. Um, uh, visually verify that it's locked. Uh, next, uh, you want to lean. Uh, for taxi, uh, lean that throttle for taxi. Uh, we don't need to run so rich uh, to the point um, in taxi where uh, those spark plugs get fouled or so on. Or uh, you know, we still have the possibility of, of detonation and uh, pre ignition. Um, so, uh, primers locked. Uh, last on that list would be to. Uh, ensure that the avionics switch is on. So the avionics switch, uh, basically, uh, uh, the radios are now turned on. Uh, they're operational, they're working. 
And uh, the main thing in this portion is this prime. Uh, to me, I would say prime, because uh, then you could have other potential problems, like I stated, as uh, engine fires. Um, and that's pretty much it. The aircraft should be started at this point. And uh, moving on, we will go through the uh, engine run up process uh, as we're on the run, or as we're on the runway. For uh, safety uh, caution, I would like to add before you go ahead and taxi off uh, on that runway is, is um, as the aircraft is starting, you want to make sure that that throttle is at about a thousand. And um, what this basically does is, you know, these aircraft uh, engines are, are, are very similar. So um, get it to a thousand and it will creep up. The aircraft the engine's cold. Uh, you just started the aircraft. Uh, it, you may set it at a thousand and it will creep up. So just ensure that um, you keep an eye on that and uh, pull power just a little bit and set RPM to a thousand. All right, let's do a audio test since it's now on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Elijah. Yes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, I can hear you clearly, and I can hear them clearly. All right, so starting off, we're going to set our brake. Okay, that's set. Pump some pressure. Those lines, got that. All right, parking brake is set. Seat belt is on. Fuel shutoff valve is on. Elevator trim tab is set for takeoff. Control stick is full aft. Now at this portion, we're gonna uh, start our uh, engine run up and that'll uh, allow us to see if there's anything going on with our mags and uh, the car peak. So going to 18. All right, we are at 18. Carpet's going to go hot. There is a drop of 50. No engine roughness. Carpet back cold. Back check. Check at 60, contact departure. Drop is 100. Back check. Drop is 100. Difference between each of those is no more than 50, and together, no more than 200. Bags are properly working, and there is no issue with those. We're going to go back to idle. Ensure that our idle works. All right, idle works. We are good. Power goes back to 1,000. Finish our checks. All right. So altimeter, currently we have... 420 on our reading. We are within 75 feet of airport elevation. This one is showing 400. So we are still within 75 feet of airport uh, elevation. Uh, moving on. Transponder. They gave us a squat code of 0350. Got that. Doors. Let's check. make sure our doors are latched. Uh, you got the last latch, cool. Did, yep. So our doors are latched. We are to the line. I'll go ahead and verify this list. Parking brake sec. Got that. Seat belt on. Got that. Fuel shutoff valves on. Got that. Verify. Make sure. Got that. Elevator trim tab set for takeoff. Got that. Control stick full aft. Engine run up was good. Altimeter setting. We were within airport elevation, so we're good. Transponder is set. 0350. And doors are latched. Moving on to our performance. So, we have, uh, let's see, so we have 496 for our takeoff roll. Our abort point is going to be 900. So, from this, from where we are, we're taking off 1.8. I'll most likely use the whole runway back there. I would say my abort point is going to be just before the 1,000-foot markers. Okay. And, okay, we got that. So, uh... This runway is 6,000 uh, feet straight ahead. If we have a engine failure or some type of abnormal uh, thing going on with the engine where, where things just don't seem right, 
If we are 600 AGL and below, a 1,000 indicated, I can just land straight ahead. I have enough. Uh, uh, I have enough runway to just land straight ahead. Other than that, if something happens, I would pitch for best glide of wind. If we're taking off one eight, I would come back around and land on one three. Okay. And yeah, so one three one three is just my best option. I see from here. Okay. That's that. All right, so my last two. 3 November, where are you parking at? It's going to be landing light. I'm going to go ahead and cut that on back here since I forgot that. I'm going to do that right Bravo there. Or November on Take off Jessica. time. We will get that when we go up there. And let's verify that list. No, I just said you could take Bravo or keep going take down the runway in November. But got now that. that you're on Engine Bravo, take brief. Up we Bravo did that. to the lights. ramp and then to the jet center. Verify lights. We got that. And take off time. We will get that when we get up here. 21. All right, that's in. And and I'm going to pull up to this whole line so they know that I'm ready. I'm getting ready to make a call. Not make the call back there. Oh, okay. And uh, where this wind's coming from before I even check that. Looks like we're going to have a headwind straight ahead. And uh, switch over there. It's going to be 127.32. Stand by. I don't want to be doing that in the air. Uh, and we are 180 at Mike. And 1,000. East Texas Tower, Jack 93, 18 at Mike, ready for takeoff. Jack 93, East Texas Tower, runway 18, fly runway heading, cliff takeoff. Fly runway heading, Jack 93, cliff takeoff. 33 three November, everything okay? Everything's okay, we're student pilots. Roger, no problem. Do you want us over to ground? Uh, it's me either way, you can stay right here. We'll stay with you, thanks a lot, 33 November. Yep. All right, cool. All right, no fire or smoke. Fuel capture secure because I don't see any fuel leaking off the back of the aircraft. Engine gauges, oil pressure is in the green. Air meter is in the middle. Our uh, climb is at 600. Just below 700 was what we had expected. All right, that concludes my engine pre-flight inspection and engine run-up. As you can see at the end, I did include um, the phosphor check, which is no fire, oil, or smoke. Fuel capture secure. Engine gauges are in the green, and rate of climb is, uh, you want to ensure that that matches up with the performance you had. And uh, I just included that because it, it'll just uh, give you a uh, proper assessment of whichever flight was conducted. Um, and uh, how the engine was operating so all the way until going into climb and level off and returning back home to base uh, the aircraft was operational and um, just in all uh, you want to be on high alert and uh, you should uh, you should focus uh, when operating an aircraft uh, just in, in depth and in good detail because um, as I stated, these, these engines are sensitive uh, and improper setting will surely cause damage to the engine, uh, whether it be spark plug or something uh, more um, prominent. Um, when that engine run up, you especially want to look at the mat drop and um, ensure that it's within range, uh, which is uh, no more than 200 and the difference shouldn't be 50 between those two. Um, and uh, that will uh, basically uh, allow you to see if uh, you would be running on one mag or if both mags are operational. Um, pay close attention at the end when shutting off, when doing the engine shutoff process, and that'll let you know if, if uh, the mags are properly uh, grounded or if there's issue with them. And um, 
and I'll follow follow the proper uh, POH uh, instructions for for uh, the uh, engine pre-start, the engine inspection, the engine run-up, and even um, shutting down the engine. And uh, you would have a safe and efficient flight. And that concludes my uh, video report.